goddamn flight boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You're not listening to the mind of an Atari Moon. I'm not Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And right now, we're going to talk about putting that energy work. Now, what is putting that energy work? You could kind of say this is a form of meditation, but just utilizing the external realm in some way, shape, or form. So even though we're always utilizing the external realm in some way, we have more intuitive ways of doing these things, and we have more external ways of doing these things. Now, for an example, getting into your meditative state from an internal perspective. This is like being in your household, or if you are outside, being secluded, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, having your things that you have to put you in that meditative state, whether you're listening to music, whether you're smoking, whether you got candles, sage, um, whatever put you, or crystals and gems, and whatever you do to get into your little surrounding or your space in front of your altar, if you have one or not, to get into your little meditative state. That's a more of an intuitive uh, way of meditation. Now, when I say putting in energy work, this is getting into your meditative state, you use, utilizing the external world. So this is like if you're utilizing the trees, you're utilizing sound yourself, because when you're meditating as far as being in the intuitive version of it, you're not utilizing so much of your voice. You're supposed to be quiet. You see what I'm saying? But when you're putting in energy work, this is externally putting yourself into a meditative state. So there may be something you like to do to put you in a meditative state. Some people like to work out. You know what I'm saying? This would be another version of putting in energy work. You know what I'm saying? Um, some people like to go out in nature. Some people like to go, just go outside. Some people like to go and uh, practice certain ways of breathing. All these ways are, are just external versions of, you know what I'm saying, putting yourself into a meditative state. But we call this energy work, putting in energy work. Because, you know, if you're truly in an intu in intuitive meditative state then a lot of times you kind of forget that you even breathing so that that's a whole nother video you know what i'm saying a lot of people who get into the and, and and me saying that i'm not deciphering intuitive meditation and putting in energy work aka external uh meditation is a right or wrong between the two it's, it's good to do both of these because you'll understand what you're getting from the external world when you're putting in energy work and then you'll understand what you're actually drawing in from from yourself and work and doing inner work when you're doing uh just regular meditation and meditative work so that's in, i just call that intuitive meditation but that's just regular meditation but when you're putting in energy work this is the things that you see people may do like when they might go outside they may um hum hum with the sounds of the creatures and the, and the sounds of the travels of the planets people may yell People may do certain affirmations, people may scream, or people may just do things, work with leaves, or uh, go, go on a tree, and you know, just do certain things outside in nature and stuff like that. For example, these are external things. People may go out and, uh, and sun gaze and things of that nature. Um, they just disregard all the other stars and just sun gaze, but that's another video. But you know, the sun is one of the main predominant reasons of external existence here, so don't get lost. This, the sun don't don't really give you internal enlightenment; it gives you external enlightenment. So, as a spirit, you're supposed to intuitively know yourself what the sun is presenting you, because what the sun is presenting you is everything you see outside of yourself. So that's the ways of the world. That is the nature. That that the, we we stay in a realm, but the realm we live in is a lower realm. It's a lower nature. It's a the earth body of water. The chakra stars are water is in is in a being's lower animalistic nature so anytime you worship any form of nature you need to understand you worship in the lower animalistic animalistic natures of the being we in and the being we in is trying to rise into a higher nature and the higher natures is the mental bodies and the mental bodies is really kind of if you get too lost into this realm down here you'll kind of forget all logic and forget all mental realms and, and just focus on your desires and focus on the things that's down here so as a spirit you're only going to resonate with the energy that brings you back down here and you're never going to create a sufficient enough mental body to go into the fourth fifth and sixth dimension to actually see a broader existence than this than just the small perception of this one down here that you see down here with the one that you see down here this is just a small perception of it this is not the overall picture you know what I'm saying? You're only seeing half of the perception, half of the definition, half of the dimension. You're not seeing the full spectrum. So always keep that in mind. And the spectrum that you guys are seeing is the realm that we are in. We are in the lower animalistic natures of a being. This this chakra of a being we live in is like in the stomach. It's, it's only like a couple levels above the root chakra. So that lets y'all know we only a couple levels above 
the hell that you guys even learn about and things of that nature and that's another video but for the most part like i said you need to understand these things from a spiritual nature and when i'm speaking about these things i'm not picking what's right or wrong because i'm not religious so i'm not picking one to be a satan and not, i'm not picking something else to be an overall god or jesus therefore we all plan out oppressor energy no all of these are things that we are creating as spirits so you need to get spiritually centered with yourself so you can understand how to pull a shift so whatever's for you in your life you don't get outweighed you don't be on the wrong side of the spectrum just because there's another individual that you are around they might center themselves but you might look at them as an example of how to center yourself and then that might that alone might make you unbalanced because wherever they're center at in their space just esoterically make you unbalanced in your space and it'll take you eons and years and a bunch of experiences and testimonies with this individual before you realize that for you to be in your space, you had to disclose yourself from that person being in their space. So, so the whole purpose was you was learning the wrong concept. You know what I'm saying? You have to keep that in mind. You always have to learn how, if you are going to look at an example of someone being in their own space, then that is what you learned. You learned that, okay, I'm supposed to be in my own space. Not, I'm supposed to be in this person's space. You see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. And this is how soul groups get developed because this would make soul groups powerful. You know what I'm saying? What makes a weak soul group is a bunch of lost spirits that's following one individual that's lost that think they centered themselves. What makes a strong soul group is a bunch of spirits that have centered themselves. And if it is a laddering system, aka a spirit that has centered itself first, it's not a lost spirit. So it's teaching or showing as an example all the other spirits how to center themselves. So even though each spirit has their own individual space, the universe, for some reason, just works that all those spaces come together anyway. You know what I'm saying? And it makes that space even more bigger. Other than, like, weak individual, uh, one space that's lost around a bunch of other weak individual spaces. And then y'all forced to come together. And then that space, to get that, that little space get washed up under all kind of currents from all kind of other spiritual groups and soul groups and things of that nature. So that's what you need to understand. But... When we're talking about energy work, you see what I'm saying? The external version of putting yourself in a meditative state. Here's the thing with this, right? And here's the here's the thin line and the thin the thin line and the main difference between um, internally meditating in your meditative state, whether it's with music, being at home, or even being outside, or just being in your own secluded space. Here's the thin line difference between that one and putting in energy work, a.k.a. the external version of putting yourself in a meditative state, utilizing things, going outside, smelling the flowers, uh, sun gazing, doing doing things and, and, you know what I'm saying, sigils and things with your body and flowing with the flows of the airs underneath the planets and the suns and the trees and the animals and humming and yelling and things of that nature. Here's what you need to understand, right? When you're, when you're, that's putting in energy work and that's good, but here's the difference between that and internal meditative state the external meditative meditative state which is energy work is this right you always have to make sure you have an intent on your mind see when you're doing internal meditative work aka this meditation being in your own meditative state and go watch my video type this type in dolo on meditation so y'all can know the proper way of meditating because a lot of people go into meditation with a whole bunch of things on their, on their mind and a lot of times that's made for putting in energy work that's the stuff you're supposed to release so that's you're supposed to do that for the external meditation type of things putting yourself in a meditative state utilizing external references going to exercise going out in nature going outside sun games that's that's for that type of stuff you see what i'm saying when you go into your internal meditative state in your own secluded space again you're supposed to cut all that off so you can gain more of the energy spectrum of clairvoyance therefore when it's when there's blankness and you're kicking everything out of your mind and feelings. When you go out into the world and experience, you, you also have clairvoyance of all the bullshit that you're getting ready to endure. You see what I'm saying? So you end up having better decisions, better outcomes, better ideas about the people you're around, better, better uh, conclusions to come to, better things to do, and things of that nature to put you into a better position to represent your space. Now, so when you're doing internal meditative work, just meditating, it is not good to go into that with things on your mind. You go, you go into that space clearing your mind. Now, when you put in an external meditative work, you utilize an external references to put yourself in a meditative state. We call this energy work. This is when you get used to always to have an intent. Because here's the thing, right? This intent is something that you have on your mind or your feelings in the middle of what you're actually doing. So, yeah, you might think you're looking at a sun. You might think you're looking at the trees. You might think you're breathing in flowers. 
or something like that. You might think you're listening to the animals and things of that nature. Now, the, when you're out in the land and, and outside or a garden or the nature and stuff like that, this is the land of creation. So your mind is your, and all these things, it's like your gardens. So you're supposed to be planting seeds there based upon what you're creating. So you're supposed to be blanking these things out and have on your mind and on your heart and your feelings on what these things appear to be to you. So instead of you going outside like I'm praising the sun, I'm praising the sun, you're supposed to be going out there and say, okay, I'm praising this and this what it looks like. You don't know what that is. I'm telling y'all it's a body of water and if we want to get into the dissecting of what water is, we know what imagination and dreams and creativity and thought forms is and things of that nature. But that's another video. But if you are going to do that, you're supposed to look at that and make that what you, what you want it to be. So how you looking at it, if you are doing your external energy work and you're humming or you're yelling or you're breathing in or you're sun gazing and things of that nature, what's on your mind and your heart and it should be your creativity, right? And what you want to see. So that sun, that could, that could, in your mind and in your heart, that can appear to be like something you want to create. That can appear like a way you want to be seen. That can appear like a position you want to maintain. That can appear like a... a, a a vacation that can appear like a living condition whatever that is that's what that's supposed to be psyched up to be and that's what that there that's what that actually is there for and actually everything else out in nature when you're doing external meditation um, work aka putting in energy work so because here's the thing when you start to put in in when you're when you're just out here just free like say for an example you're putting in external meditative work you're putting yourself in a meditative state utilizing external references that's putting in energy work being in nature and doing certain things utilizing what's already have been created from another thought form in some way shape or form here's the thing when you're doing that in a state of being of just doing it because you just want to be free or you're, you're, you're doing it because you're in a state of being is because you think you're supposed to be doing this or you think you're supposed to be doing nature or whatever like that here's the thing um, you open yourself up to be taken by a demon every time you need to keep that in mind. You put yourself in a situation where you're able, to, you're open yourself because, see, look, demons or spirits in general look at look at that as gullible spirits, gullible and uncreative spirits. So you need to keep that in mind also. They look at that as gullible and uncreative spirits when you're in that circumstance. Because here's the thing, right? Like I said, I repeat. <clears throat> when you're out putting out energy work. And you're, you're giving off your own energy, but you ain't got your own imaginative thought form about what you're actually seeing. You actually just actually think you're looking at the sun and the sun and the trees and the animals and shit like that. What's actually happening is, right, when you just think you're just doing something uh, like otherwise, like you're, like you're just doing something like you're just open and you're just free because you're thinking you're receiving something from these actual things. For the most part, you're always going to be receiving something from a demon every motherfucking time. See what I'm saying? You gotta keep that keep that in mind. My bad, y'all. I'm looking at my I'm looking at uh, my text. <laughs> but yeah, look, I just got attacked by a demon. But yeah, you always gonna be attacked by a demon every time because they demons look at look at these kind of spirits as uncreative, gullible spirits. They they look at your spirit as uncreative and gullible because you need some external reference to come up with your imagination and idea. So you you think you actually think what you're looking at, but you don't know what you're looking at. The way your mind is on it is already programmed. I don't care how far the program go. It could go all the way to Egyptian days. When you're looking at these things and putting your meaning and reasoning behind whatever chant or whatever ritual you're doing as far as your energy work, you need to know that's a program. That is not a program you created. That is not an imagery or an imagination that you're utilizing from your own solar plexus, your own Lucifer, your own solar system, your own wills, your own imagination. That you're utilizing someone else's imagination about it, and then you're bouncing, you're, you're piggybacking off that. And for the most part, uh, you're going to get a you. And when you do these things, you're just looking at these things as is, without your own creativity. So you just think you're look, just doing things in nature as far as you wanting to be free and you being open. Because you think you're getting ready to be influenced by something. But whatever you're getting ready to be influenced by is the program that you already psyched these things up to be. And the meaning and reason that you're putting behind why you doing or sun gazing up under these things in the first place. Like you ain't even got your own imagination or thought form of why you sun gazing these things. You're looking for the older civilization and you're finding the information of why they was doing these certain things. And you think that's the right thing to do. And for the most part, you're just going back to an older program. And back then, whatever they was doing, they was doing their own program. And it was a lot of them following other people's programs. You might be the person that's on the, lost on the spectrum right now where 
you fall on someone else's program and you got people here like me today who's telling you that you're supposed to have your own program because this is already pre-programmed so you create your own program off these things don't utilize your own this program to make your own software off of it you see what i'm saying just, your software is just going to be remixed to this motherfucking program but when you look at this thing and create your own program, for the most part, you can have as many softwares under your own program. You don't have to be one software under this program. You see, you, that's another video. But, yeah. So also, you know what I'm saying? Like I was saying, you know, um, when you're doing this and you just feel like you're being open and free because you're getting ready to receive something, but you don't even know what you're getting ready to receive, the first thing you're going to get ready to receive is a, another spirit's idea that was stronger than yours because you open to receive that thought form that that other spirit is going to create. And a lot of times out of 10, since you already programmed, this is what you're going to attract. You see what I'm saying? Because you ain't attracting your own spiritual nature and creating things here and attracting your own spirit guides and things of that nature you're utilizing a program but you do not know what you do as a spirit you see what i'm saying and that's what it really boils down to so when you're putting that energy work you have to make sure you always have your own intent what you're doing it for what you're what you're breathing in this flower for what you're look sun gazing for what you're breathing in the, the trees and the toxins of it for what you're walking amongst the gardens for on your mind you have to be something you're creatively into with there you see what i'm saying now, if you're just doing it because you feel like this is what we're supposed to do and you're supposed to be free and open, nine times out of ten, you're going along a program and that free and openness is going to have you open to get possessed by a motherfucking demon that wants you to think about this ram in a way it wants you to think about it. You see what I'm saying? And then it's going to make you put you into a situation where, as a spirit, you go into that form and any form, whether it's a thought form, feeling, body, or whatever, has an expiration date. And once that starts to lose steam and once it starts to expire, you go down with it. And everything is a light form when you say thought forms and all that. So it, it's, it's something you got lost into, enticed into. You see what I'm saying? It's something you got lost into and enticed because you, you was enticed by, by as a spirit. And once you went into that spaceship, once it start to sink, you're going to start to sink with it. And everybody's going to see what kind of chaotic life you start manifesting as a sinking ship. People are going to start to see everything you desire, everything you attach to, everything that bother you, everything that put you in stress, everything that make you, you see what I'm saying? Almost to the point that you'll be in a circumstance, a situation where you're so lost that you lose yourself into yourself. And as a spirit, you be spiritless. And you and you be just talking about things that's, that your spirit is enduring. Where your spirit is not enduring but anything of yourself. It's just enduring all of yourselves. All the things you're lost into. Your chakras, your blood cells, the ways of the world. The things that we all created as a spirit. You're lost into these things. You're lost into the sun. You're not, un you're not overstanding the sun, you're just understanding the sun. So you're under the government, but you're not overstanding. And for you to overcome with, actual, with the, the actual influences that is putting you over. I mean, putting you under. You see what I'm saying? So you, you, that's the concept of astrology. Also, you have a lot of people out here who's teaching astrology in the wrong way. They're teaching you astrology for you to get lost in your desires. Astrology whole purpose. Even people in the Bible tell you that, that don't get lost into astrology. There's ways of it. Don't get lost into astrology as far as the the book, the Bible, that is an astrology book. Those are just different names for what we're saying now. That you need to know that. So it's saying don't get lost into man's word. Don't get lost into man's philosophical points of views and women. Don't get lost into astrology because this book is astrology. Now, the whole, the whole purpose is letting you know what not to get lost in. Overstanding shit. You see what I'm saying? So even if you don't think the Bible is an astrology book because you lost. It's, it's just a more indoctrinated version of it. You might just be lost. You have, it, it's teaching you how to not get lost in your desires. So once you get once you get unreligious and get real spiritual, you'll understand. It's just that's just a more indoctrinated version of what I'm saying. Astrology is just understanding the natures of where we at. So since we're in a, some low vibrational ass natures, the more we understand it, the more we can overstand it. So we don't get lost in it. So we can overcome it and, and we'll receive all the prosperities from those testimonies of overcoming. Every time you overcome something, it's an accomplishment. You always receive benefits from the universe. Every time you stay stuck into a routine and pattern, you stay get washed up under the current. And you stay experiencing the same circumstances and situations over and over again. It never fails. But you got to understand this. Now, taking it out the religious aspects of it, this is what astrology is for understanding the natures so we don't get washed up under it 
so we don't get lost into our desire so we can know what to do and what not to do because we know if we didn't understand these things then we'll know we'll be in these situations that we can't overcome because we'll be not knowing what we do then you got people out here who teach in astrology that uh how to get lost into it oh this sign go with this sign so y'all need to be together or or a circumstance or a situation where uh oh this is this energy so this is how things going to play out or this is no your astrology is about learning energy work not being lost into it you see what i'm saying to the point that you feel like oh this is just me and this is the way things is and this is the circumstances the way how things supposed to play out no understanding astrology is learning how oh this is the shit we got lost in and this is the shit that we need to get up out of you see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. So, but when we talk about putting in uh, energy work, you need to know putting in energy work, make sure you always have intent. That's why you see me out here right now. My whole intent was to make this video about intentions, right? So I'm just not out here just being free and being open to be attacked by all the spirits that have been roaming here for eons. I've been chasing these, I've been chasing a lot of these spirits around for eons. That's why I'm aware of a lot of this shit. But that's why I'm here. You know what I'm saying? But. You could just be out here right now and it's thinking you're trying to enjoy a good day and get attacked by a thousand demons that day. Demons that been coming here ready to get born again. And your ass think you under, up under some program or indoctrination because you think you're doing the right thing. And and whatever works, it's the right thing. And Spirit's been doing things down here that have been working for them for eons. So a lot of things down here seem like it works. You see what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of shit seem like it works. So yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying. So, at the same time, you need to keep in mind, uh, just because motherfucking something works, that don't mean it's the motherfucking right thing to do. And you could be doing something that worked for a long period of time, and then once that's a spirit, motherfucker, that, that, that shit sinks, it expires, then your ass gonna be feeling more guilty as a spirit than you ever did. So, that lets you know that, yeah, it might have worked, but it might not have been the right thing to do after all. Because all that suffering, was it worth it? And nine times out of ten, a lot of shit that y'all go through in this lifetime don't even be worth it. Flight boss, bitch. Goddamn air. So be careful when you out here putting in energy work if you ain't got your own intent. Because your own intent is almost like your own shield, your own idea, your own imagination, your own feelings about what you're seeing. So that plays as a shield for your soft spot, for your spirit. And other spirits can't attack that because whatever imagination they're going to have, you start thinking they can't really do it because you got you got conviction on your own imagination of how you see things to play out. And that's slowly going to surely but manifest. Flight boss, bitch. Goddamn air. <laughs>